We are here at San Diego Comic-Con again, and this time we are with the cast of Teen Wolf, well, two of the cast members and the creator. That's right. <laughs> okay, so Jeff Davis, my first question is for you. Um, it's been five years since the finale of the show. Can you tell me how many years in universe it's been and, you know, what's what's happening up at Beacon Hills? Um, I'm probably going to get this wrong, but because <laughs> I, I did the timeline and I know that I, I, I know what year the movie takes place. It's 2026, actually. And right now in the movie, uh, Scott McCall is actually older than Tyler Posey. Yes, I believe I'm 33. Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> yes, Scott, I think so. Scott McCall, I think, is 33 years old. And I'm only 12. So <laughs> it's pretty cool, right? Emotionally and physically. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I have no comment for that. Um, so I just saw the teaser trailer and it looked amazing. I love the horror vibes. I love everything about it. Um, what can you tell us about that villain that we're going to see in this movie? There's you know, more who's than the big one. bad? Give us everything. There's more than one. There's more than um, one. The Nogitsune has returned. Oh! I can say that. That is the voice you hear. But um, there's going to be some arrows shot uh, and fired towards uh, Scott McCall. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. But he's going to, you know, he's going to, he's going to man up and, and, Take it on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, speaking of manning up, Posey, um, Tyler Posey, it's been, you you started this role when you were like 18. Exactly. And it's been a long journey. What has it been like playing Scott as an adult? And, you know, he, I mean, he's been an alpha this entire time, which is obviously a, quite a big time jump. What have you, you know, what's the differences? What have you learned in the process? Yeah, well, what's really interesting, which we talked about on the panel, was that um, being able to play Scott as a 30-year-old man, as opposed to an 18-year-old uh, teen, is a really... Um, I think really fun thing that I got to do. And also I, you see Scott as this hero, this werewolf hero for the last uh, six years of the, of the, of the TV show. Now you see Scott as like an adult human and Scott's kind of taken a, a little bit of a break from the Beacon Hills world and the hero world and, and really tried to kind of focus on what it is to be a human adult, which comes with uh, a lot of anxieties and stress and sometimes depression. And so I got to bring that to Scott, which is something that we've never really seen before. He's had anxiety. He's been depressed before. He's He's been stressed out, but in a different sense. You know, no one's really relying on him to save the world. He's kind of just trying to save himself as, as a human, you know, and trying to live life as a human rather than this supernatural superhero. Um, so I thought that was really interesting because, you know, throughout the years of Teen Wolf, we always I always try to, you know, grow Scott. With, with Jeff's writing and, and have an arc for him. And this, to me, is the first time we've ever seen Scott in this aspect before. And that was just awesome to play. Yeah, I mean, I can't wait to see it. And um, Tyler Hecklin, yes. it was revealed that you have a son. You have a child. How has it been being... Derek has a child. Derek has a child. <laughs> 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 Clarify well, you, that. Well, you've played a dad before. I mean, you play your Superman dad. I yeah. mean, what has it been like being, you know, Derek the father? Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I always say I'm very grateful that on the show, Jeff gave me such a great arc with Derek. Uh, I feel like where he started in season one and where his story ended was such a complete journey for him as far as like trying to figure out who he was and what his purpose was. And I feel like he found that by the time we were done telling a story on the show. Um, so it was really great to come back and to see him now concerned with helping his son through that same kind of journey. So um, for me, it was something really fun to come back and do that was completely new with the character. Uh, it's different than the way I play a father on the other show, uh, which, you know, there's uh, there's different parenting styles. I think Clark and Derek have a lot of similarities, but also a lot of differences. Their upbringings and their past experiences are vastly different. So um, it was fun to kind of be able to dip in and out of both of those. I mean, would you want to be raised by Derek or by Superman. <laughs> they both have their perks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very fair, a very fair answer. Um, Jeff, so we saw obviously at the end of that teaser, um, Allison is yes. back and we, we knew Crystal was going to be back in the movie, but I mean, what can you tease about her return? It's not a cameo. Yeah, she's a big part of the movie. And um, and I think it's pretty significant seeing her uh, walk away from the, uh, the burning wreck of a car uh, with arrows on her back, so. Um, I don't want to say too much, but she has a lot of fun things to do in the movie. And um, it was what was really fun about doing this was one of the things we did was um, 
figuring out which characters haven't been with each other in the show. And I realized I'd never put uh, Derek and the coach in a scene together. <laughs> So they have a scene together, and it's really fun. It was it's fun. Yeah. So fun. That was great. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> okay, well, that's amazing. I really can't wait to see that now. Um, just, I mean, so obviously we all know that, unfortunately, Dylan O'Brien cannot be a part of this. But I did see that his dad, is Styles' dad, is still going to be on the show. Um, what are you, how are you filling in that gap of Styles not being part of it? He was such a pivotal part of the group. I mean. Yeah, well, um, what we do is uh, we we don't ignore it, but we reference it. And I think you, we can't do the movie without paying tribute to the character of Styles. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so he comes up in uh, more than one situation, and there's a big storyline with Lydia actually that the fans can look forward to that has to do with their relationship. So I'm not going to say any more than that. You can say more if you want to. <laughs> um, so I mean, you're coming back at Comic Con. You're getting to see the fans. You just did the panel. What is the aspect that you're most excited to as far as um, seeing, you know, how the fans react to all of this? Um, I think it's just exciting because I know at least I think we're all aware that the fans have been very, uh, how do you say, loud, passionate. loud and passionate, passionate about <laughs> wanting more. So uh, it's nice. It feels like the right time. It feels like enough time has passed that um, for all of us in our lives, we can come back to it with kind of a fresh take on it. And for the characters, they've had enough time away to where we get to I think Jeff kind of pitched it to me when we first talked about it. It's like, you know, give them the greatest hits, but we just have like a little something new with all of those. So I think people will be excited to see everybody back, but in new places with new stories to tell. Uh, so I think I'm just excited that the fans finally get what they've been asking for for a minute. <laughs> yeah, the trick is to not not fall too much into nostalgia. It's to give them something new as well. And I mean, when I saw the shot for the first time in the trailer of Derek and his son Eli and they both turned to camera I was like oh my god <laughs> that's good <laughs> they look great together yeah Vince Vince Mattis my playing my yeah. son Eli and he was great great young actor and we're lucky to have him so excited for people to love that him. little bitch yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's an inside joke between us he'll, he'll understand <laughs> I mean, I hope he does. I'm fine with it. But... <laughs> so uh, just switching gears a little bit, Jeff, um, I want to ask about Wolfpack. Obviously, you guys just announced that Sarah Michelle Gellar is going to be a star and an EP. What was it like getting Buffy, you know, to be a part of the Wolfpack? Well, when someone mentioned her name, I was like, can we get her? Is she going to do a show like this? Has She hasn't done horror in TV in years since Buffy. She did um, a couple horror movies, but in TV, it's it's different. It's uh, it's every day. Um, and when we met, we had a Zoom meeting. And my first, my biggest uh, thing was, is she nice? Is she a nice person to work with? Because I'm at a point in my career where I don't want to work with assholes anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she's amazing. She's such a pro. We're very lucky to have her. And it was really nice to have her here at Comic-Con. Hell yeah, that was yeah. cool for us too. Cause like Team Wolf has been <laughs> so inspired by Buffy, you know, yeah. and in a lot of aspects and the tone and everything. And so to have her here was, Really special for us, too. So thank you for bringing her. Yeah. And we were on stage with Superman, the Teen Wolf, and Buffy the Vampire yeah. Slayer. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty, it's kind of amazing. Pretty, pretty iconic. Panel. And <laughs> Jeff good. Davis. Yeah. Goddamn right. Yeah. Goddamn right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I have to ask, since it involves werewolves, wolves in general, are is there any connection as far as um, universes go? Uh, yeah. No. Good question. So it's, they're totally separate. And one of the things I wanted to do with Wolfpack was make it its own new thing uh, where the rules were different, the world was different. Um, it's got a different vibe to it. I'm not entirely sure I could do uh, another version of Teen Wolf and do it as well as the first. <laughs> yeah. There's, I mean, the magic of the two Tylers and Dylan and Holland and Crystal, that's, uh, that's lightning in a bottle. I mean, that yeah, Tyler that's duo. Group. Yeah, that's a good way to <laughs> That's a good group. So, I, I mean, I just want to know, obviously this movie is, we're getting a revival. Does the door, does the door leave little, do you leave the door a little cracked open for future Teen Wolf things or is it shut? Is this the... That doesn't sound like a, a, a question for either of us. <laughs> we'll see. I um, mean, do you guys I want to play say, the characters uh, again? Yes! <laughs> always and forever! I love this show and I'm always down. Sorry, just scream in your ear. No, no, no. I'm more worried about the guy with the, with the headphones on. <laughs> How you doing? Yeah, I'm always down. Always love this show. So please, please write more. Do more Paramount. We'll see. Plus, if everybody we do like a, signs like a up for Paramount list. Plus after yeah. watching this. 
they'll make me do more. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Derek already has a kid. You could do the next generation. They're yep. all, I mean, I could extended see Vince, universes have been Vince made on less. Too. He's pretty damn good. Yeah, he's great. Love that guy. I mean, can you tell us when we're going to see this movie? When people are going to be able to stream it? I know I'm asking the hard questions here. Soon. Nice. Great answer. Will I be wearing a scarf? Will I be wearing a flannel? <laughs> It depends on what you like. Depends on where you're going to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that really depends. Uh, okay. Well, but. I really want to know what was it like, you know, as a cast, getting back together, working on set together, especially, I mean, during COVID, all these things. I mean, you've been apart. What was it like? It was the greatest. Yeah. Uh, I, we always, there's a cliche of like, you know, you, you create a family when you do a show. Uh, it's not always true, but sometimes you say that. And I think for us, you know, we really... We always really meant that. I think everybody is just such a close group. I always say most of my best friends are from this show. And so to get everybody back together and to show up to work and be there at 5 a.m. and racing against the sunrise and seeing covered all the blood. friends that you usually hang out with and have dinner with all the time. And yeah, covered in blood and a bunch of other madness. Uh, it's just it's, it's special, it's special after all these years to to get everybody back together and do it all over again. Yeah. It's, it's surprising to me, too, because I see them on Instagram and I'm like, God, they really do like each other. <laughs> They're it's hanging out, show. going on vacations. Yeah, yeah. I don't like any of them. Yeah, he <laughs> it's sound, it doesn't sound like you're invited on those vacations. I'm not. I'm too busy. He's always working. He's always working. Okay. Well, I mean, I need to know when you guys are putting the makeup on, when you're putting, you're becoming the wolf. Do you guys, what do you do to get into the zone of, you know, of becoming the werewolf? Get into the zone? So our, our makeup guys are awesome yeah. and they've been with us since day one pretty much and so like they've gotten a lot better at their craft also you know which is why the the, the makeup looks so good in this movie um and they're the funnest most easygoing dudes ever and it's chris and eric chris and eric yeah right. and and you know sitting in that makeup trailer sitting down for two and a half hours or plus uh could be kind of you know annoying and grueling but with the fact that these dudes are like the coolest it's it makes it so much more fun and it, really helps kind of get us into this sort of I think when they put when you guys the put the fangs in there's Jeff definitely a feeling right yeah 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 you like when you have the prosthetic on it's fun but you're kind of just talking and chatting and you know you you look different but when you put the fangs in all of a sudden there's just like a different yeah there's just like a different energy all of a sudden in your in the muscles yeah. in your face and it wants to growl do that <laughs> it's muscle memory I guess we've done it for too many years it's easy to growl yeah with fangs in for some reason. Also, they make it look really good. So, I mean, they, they do such a good job with it that it's not, you know, it's one of those things where if you show up and you feel like you look really funky and it's bad makeup, then you're kind of like, eh, maybe a little self-conscious about it. But they do such a great job that, you know, you kind of, it it helps us believe it a little bit as much as we can as well. So it's always, it's always fun. And our post team is always really great at, at making it look good. So when you can trust the people to take care of it after you're done, it's, uh, it's a little bit easier to jump in and commit to that. Okay, well, it sounds like once the fangs are in, you guys are blasting Metallica. It's like you become a different person. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you're actually not <laughs> wrong about the Metallica part. It's pretty cool. I mean, do you guys have playlists? Like, what is what is the music that's playing yeah, on set? I don't have a playlist. Uh, Ours no, varies a lot, actually. That's that's something that we started with. Uh, that I started with Chris, and then when we would do it, that we would always like each of us. Each time we knew we were going to do the Wolf on the show that day, like one person would do like bring in a new band. We play like a bunch of albums, and then. The next time the other person would do it. So the first one I think we started with was Black Keys. That was the first one really? I brought in. I was like, let's do Black Keys today. <laughs> did Black Keys, and then it's just been a back and forth. Chris has a great taste in music. It's bizarre and weird, and yeah. and so I can never compete with it. So I always <laughs> Tyler has Blink 182 and Continuous Loop inside of his head. Very true. <laughs> well, I know that had a strong influence in your childhood. And yes. I mean, I understand that. I, I you you have the songs that you like to repeat. You know. Very true. So I, you know, I want to know this cast has been so tight knit. Obviously, with this movie, I'm wondering, are we going to be introduced to some new characters? Is there are there new people joining mm -hmm. into the weave? Several of the story? new characters. There's Eli, Derek's son, played by Vince Mattis. Amy Workman plays Hikari, um, who's got a great storyline. Um, Hell yeah, she's fantastic. Yeah, she's yeah great. Amy's awesome. And she's such a good person. And she's, she's also nice like person. the most badass out of all of us. Like she, she is, could, she yeah. could. Yeah. Act, she's actually like a trained warrior. Yeah. She so. also does cosplay, and she's really good she at does. it. She does. Yeah. I'm surprised she's not here. No. Yeah, she's is she be. here? Um, <laughs> but a couple other people as well. Um, but we have we have a lot of main characters to get through, so not too many people. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of room to introduce more. Yeah. yeah. You, know. you could always introduce more. I'm sure the fans will be very happy to hear that. No, <laughs> no more new characters. <laughs> done with Maxed it. out. Maxed out. Okay. So, I mean, we're at Comic-Con. We're... 
we're in the in the world of the fans. What are the things that you fan out over? And are you guys wasting any money on the floor over here? I wish I had time. Yeah, I usually like no. to walk the floor and see the artists draw. Yeah. Um, but I my first Comic Con, I came just as a fan. Actually, it was when they were start just started doing the Star Wars prequels. Um, That's awesome. And it was one of the first panels, I think. Um, but uh, I love Comic Con. I love seeing everything up and it's kind of amazing here because we were our first comic-con we were basically slotted in because uh, another tv show canceled and they were like we have room my friend said do you want us to get in here and then i was sitting in a, a car uh with the chauffeur and he asked me what we were what i'm here working on and i basically said that <laughs> and it was the g giant teen wolf poster on the building so it's quite a journey yeah it's quite amazing yeah, it's awesome. I, I'm i fanning out over Halo, big time. I was a huge fan of the video game. It was the only video game I ever really played. As soon as that game stopped coming out, I just stopped playing video games. And it's such a good TV show. And it's on our same network, you know, it's Paramount Plus also. Um, but I haven't really, I don't think I've ever really explored the floor, ever. It's scary. Here, we've we we been we out get there mobbed. for like a minute. We've been out there for like a minute yeah. one time. But yeah, here the floor is, it's... Uh, it's we got we're out there plenty house, for, yeah. for signings. Yes, so it's yeah. a bit ma it's a bit of madness. They can't go out now, so they would get mobbed. Well, yeah. I was going to say like the cosplay, you could just you put a mask I've on, you put a helmet that. on, you kind of explore yeah. out there. No one would know the difference until, you know, until one of them spots right, you exactly. and then yeah, you yeah, run. Yeah, They're yeah. smart. <laughs> okay, well, I've thought I'm... about doing that. Like Brian Cranston did that one year, right? Yeah. I've thought about doing did that. He? Yeah. Oh, but yeah. he did that as He did it as himself. Uh, yeah, 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 that was great. I thought about bringing my my great. fangs. To this on this trip, but I didn't bring my fangs. That's prob that probably is for the best. <laughs> yeah, I would have yeah. bit you. Yeah, probably. Hundred <laughs> percent. Well, that's not going to stop you, but <laughs> no. <laughs> Okay, and on that note, um, <laughs> we want to thank you guys for chatting with me. Thank Can't you. Can't wait for the movie. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right. 